I see community leaders as the people who are just out there doing things. I mean, there's probably levels of community leaders. Um, a lot of the people who would we would interview, uh, sorry, who I'd be talking about would not describe themselves as leaders, um, but would say the politicians are the leaders or those kind of people. Um, but it's the people who I think other people in the community actually look to. So, so when, when there's an issue, that they're, they're the people they go to first. And, and you notice it quite quickly that, that they don't come to the services and they don't even come to community centres necessarily, but they'll go to some neighbour somewhere or, or some person within the community as a first point of call. And I, I would say that they're the people I'd be talking about who are the community leaders who through their actions and through their deeds and through the trust that they've won over a, a you know, period of time, they're recognised within their community as, as that go-to person and, and that's what I'd say leadership is. Yeah, look, Stella Court was, um, is a, a group of uh, houses, uh, housing trust units um, in Hackham West. Stella Court is often known as the hotspot of, of trouble in Hackham West. So when I first arrived there, people would say, well, yeah, Stella Court, that's where if there's trouble, that's where it will start from. Um, but the group of residents who moved into that area um, had situation where they had a thoroughfare going right through to the IGA, right through their units. And so the area outside, which was their common area, was, was terrifying. But well, I came here about five years ago and it's just a rubbish dump more or less because I was going to condemn the houses and sell them off and the change of government, they weren't allowed to sell them so we more or less had to do them up after being trashed and all that. And it's absolutely sort of nothing here and we sort of built it up for that. Right, well we started first by asking the housing trust to block off the fences and um, a few meetings in the car park with barbecues and that and and then we said about a garden and they said, oh, if you do one, you've got to take the lot. And we looked at each other and we said, yeah, we'll do it. So they did something about it. They, they organised themselves, particularly with two or three of them, got the group organised as a group of residents. They got together with Housing SA, they got together with the police, they got together with the local, our local council. Um, they shut off, first of all, the thoroughfare was one of the first things they did. And then they got a whole heap of plants and they planted the area to make it look beautiful. Never been gardening before and I didn't like the look of here. Um, when I came here I wanted to cry and I wanted to move. The first 12 months I didn't come out of my unit, I stayed inside. But when the Housing Trust called that meeting and they said about a garden, I thought, yeah. Never gardened before and um, Royce helped us. He cut these plants up and Di and I looked at each other and we thought, which end do you put in? And we've come from there to gardeners to what we've got now. Because you don't have to be a, a, a real sleuth to know about gardening. You more or less learn by yourself, you learn by your mistakes. And that's the easiest way to learn. I've had other people from the units further down the road come here and ask me, can they get cuttings when some of them die off? They'd like to put gardens in too. That's about... Uh, there's some double story units down there, they want to come at cuttings. I'll give them cuttings because I started with cuttings, thanks to the people in the neighbourhood. Uh, this is the first community I'd, I'd moved into and it was really not what I expected. Uh, without being negative, I thought it would, you know, they're all the same and one and that, but it was a very unique setting. I'd never seen gardens done like it in a private, um, area and uh, it played a big part in making me feel at home. This is my, this is my, I get such a relief to come out here and think, oh, are you dead or are you grown? It's been an achievement. It's put me back on my feet from health. It's got me from just sitting there. And I'm too active now, I've got to get into it. But before it was dreadful living here, but now there's something to do. And you can keep very, and if you're in the garden, you get very healthy. So if anybody wants to do gardening, take it up. The fact that this is a, a setting where everyone's out and about, there's things going on, and even though there is, yeah, uh, you know, there's a, that crime or, or that around, uh, it makes us feel a bit secure knowing that the outsiders know that it's not just a docile uh, environment, that everyone's out and about, and it very much plays a part, and I think in reducing any secure problems, security problems we have here. And it's important we feel safe.
the atmosphere here, everybody's really happy here. Um, they all appreciate what we've done here. They're all happy to live here. We come out and have coffee with each other. Before, we never come out of our units. No one spoke. But now it's more open, friendly, and it's a good environment. The residents come out and they talk to you. And it's, it's a place almost, yes, paradise. It's a beautiful spot to visit. Um, and that's, that's from them, they, they did that. They had a little bit of help that they gathered around themselves, but they've, they've gone on and created what they have. So, amazing story.